So we talked about curiosity as a skill that we really need to try and imbue within all our HR professionals. Yeah. Um, what are some of the other skills and capabilities that the Chief People Officer is now looking for more of in HR? Mm -hmm. And then you can go across hard and soft skills. There. Sure. Um, I think for, um, for myself, it's a blend of um, having folks that are strategic and really understand business consulting. Um, it is a, uh, a lost art of being able to consult and actually influence and, yeah. um, and do change management. Um, there's also some element of negotiation and conflict management um, because you know, HR and the role um, requires that there are some checks and balances and so you do have to say no sometimes to cool. executives who yeah. really don't expect you to say no. And so the ability to do that I think is critical. Um, I think analytics and storytelling around data is critically important. So as you're looking at things, what, it, what is it telling you? What trends is it telling you? Um, I would take the curiosity even more on how do I connect the dots around disparate parts of yeah. sort of the portfolio of HR and this data in HR, you know, so where am I? Who are the people that are most likely to leave my company? How do I know that? Are there certain leaders that have higher turnover rates? Why is that? Is that a is that a leadership intervention issue? Um, is it a is it a recruiter issue? What are the what are the things? Um, and really just taking a look at sort of um, having some baseline uh, metrics in your in your business, thinking about that. Uh, and so I think for um, for HR, there are a lot of specialty roles. I still think that um, you know compensation is going to be an area of specialization. Uh, you know, benefits maybe more in the international realm than I'd say in the U.S., um, but sort of wellness in some of the places we're going there. Yeah. Um, CSR has become a real specialization. There's a lot of um, possible strategic elements of that for, um, for the HR function. Uh, recruiting, I think, is really interesting and is changing a lot um, because you've got all these sourcing tools now out there. I think the, the sourcing role um, is probably really going to go away and be automated in a lot of ways. Um, you know, that's going to take a little bit longer with language processing and things, but I think it's going to happen. Uh, and then I think the role of the recruiter really is going to be, you know, it doesn't matter if these um, tools can find you. If you get inundated with five emails, you're not going to care. If you don't answer emails, you're not, you know, you still need a human to find you yeah. and then get you to come in the door or, you know, show up for the virtual meeting or whatever it is. So, so I think every part of the HR function is evolving. And so for me, I really look for a blend of I need a couple people on the team that can go from strategic to tactical. So um, that is a really, really tough skill to find, uh, especially in business partners. Um, I need folks that are phenomenal at team building and nurturing. I've got a couple of those on my team. You know, I'm, uh, you know, knowing who you are as a CHRO and then complementing yourself with people that are stronger than you in areas that are just not your natural yep. tendency. Yep. Uh, and so I think every CHR has a little bit of a different flavor on that. Uh, and then I think sort of visualization and the brand element, like people who can really help us think about how do we use media and um, the employee stories to um, to really think about our thought leadership. So, so kind of a blend of those skills. Um, you know, learning is a really interesting area for us. Lots of digital learning, thinking differently about um, how much, you know, people don't want to sit now and go for two days someplace. They want to be able to do it on their own time. They want to do it on demand. A lot of your traditional learning um, management folks uh, don't know how to do that. Uh, and then the last thing I would say is org design and operating models. Um, a lot of companies are moving towards, you know, as a service, managed service, consulting led subscription. They're very complicated models that have a lot of um, implications to them. And there aren't a lot of great practitioners out there who really understand the nuance of that. How do you design new organizations? Yeah. And then how do you effectively do the change management of actually organ reorganizing? Uh, you lose a lot of people that way if you don't do it thoughtfully. And um, the pace of change is going to require, I mean, pretty much any company, if you talk to, I talked to lots of CHROs, we're all dealing with this where we're reorganizing, we're upskilling, we're reskilling leaders, we're trans, you know, we're all transforming, we're all digitizing, you know, so so the, the skills are really changing. Um, and the HR technology realm, I think there's a real opportunity for specialization there yeah. uh, for folks that really understand APIs and have multiple HRISs and ATS experience and can really think through how do we how do we look at that ecosystem? How do we partner with our IT organizations and the CIO? Um, CIOs uh, have a lot of power now in many organizations to make decisions around HR technology. So partnering and collaborating is critically important. Um, so that's just in, I'm sure there's many more, but those yeah, are yeah. like big, big elements for, for how I think about my team. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice 
and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.